Well, there was a lady who was on vacation, and this lady was a, was a follower of Jesus. And as she was <clears throat> on vacation, she went to a place where she was watching this, this man who was a silversmith. And she watched as he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up and, and was, was refining this, this piece of silver. And as she watched, she was thinking about how sometimes God holds us in the fire and how difficult that can be, how it can be a painful, difficult time, but she was also reflecting on, on the work that this man was doing at the same time. And she asked him, um, she, as he was working away there, she asked if it was true that, that he had to sit in front of the fire the whole time and, and watch and, and uh, be there as the fire or as the silver was being refined. And the man answered her, he was answering questions, didn't know what she was thinking exactly, but he said, yes, he had to be there the whole time because um, he had to have his eyes on it and watch the process. Because if the silver was left for too long in the fire, it could get to a point where it got too hot and the silver could actually begin to evaporate and, and actually burn off and it could be destroyed. And that made her think even more, and, and she asked more questions. Well, how, how do you know when the silver is done? How do you, how do you find that place where, where the pure impurities are gone, but the silver itself is not being damaged or destroyed? And he smiled and answered, said, now that's easy, when I can see my own image in it. And that really spoke to her about this refining process that, that God has for us. The, the idea of us being purified of us being made clean, being made fruitful, is talked about all kinds of places in Scripture. And different images are used for it. Uh, this image of, of a refiner's fire is, is one of the more common images, but there's other, other ways that it's, the Bible talks about it as well. Uh, in terms of, of God being the gardener and pruning us, that's another image that, that, uh, that we hear sometimes. Even in the Malachi passage that Donna read, it talked about you know, a, a strong soap cleaning us and purifying us. So the idea that God wants to work in us and to purify us um, is a common theme throughout Scripture. It's what God wants to do in us. But the reality, too, is that it can be a difficult time. It can be a difficult process. There can be pain involved in us uh, us as that process is going on. And so I want us to think for a few minutes about this, this process of, of being refined, of being made pure, of being set apart. The purpose of God's refining fire. Uh, we just sang that, that song, Refiner's Fire, which talks about that, that purpose. The purpose is to, is to get rid of the impurities in us. When you think about how ore is smelted, where, where it's... it's uh, taken out of the ground, there's all kinds of impurities in it. There's, there's, in the ore, it's not just pure silver or pure gold. There's other kinds of minerals and stuff in it. And so as they take that ore and they put it into um, in a, a smelter or, or something, it's called a crucible, this gets all melted down and, and the impurities rise to the surface of this. And so as, as the metals melt at different kinds of temperatures, they can begin to skim off the top. The impurity, so that what is left underneath is the pure thing. And God's fires of purification in our lives is to to identify those impurities in us. And God knows that we are human beings. He knows that we're imperfect. He knows that that we're not like Him in, in that He is perfect. And so even though it's painful for us and it's difficult sometimes, God allows us to go through situations that will purify us. And it's a process that, that we need to submit to. In Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4, we read this. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. And so God desires more and more for us to be made like Him. So that more and more as those impurities get, that get skimmed off and, and get uh, taken away, that His image can be seen in us. Because it's those impurities, it's those, those sins that are in us that, that stop us from reflecting the image of God. In Israel's history, 
the time of the Babylonian exile was, was one where um, there was sin in Israel. And so God allowed them to go through a really difficult time. He allowed them to be taken down as a nation. The, the nation of Israel, not only was it divided by civil war, but then individually those, those nations were allowed to be captured by other nations because they had rebellion in them. They refused to submit themselves to God. They refused to, to acknowledge Him. They, they served other gods and they, they went their own way. And so as, as painful and as difficult it was for them and also for God, I think, He allowed them to go through the, the fire of, of being captive, of being destroyed as a nation. So then they could see their need and they could hear God's invitation to come back to Him. But even in the midst of those, those difficult times, God continued to promise that there would be a time of restoration. That this time of refining wasn't going to last forever. That it was a season of their life and if they submitted to it and if they heard His voice and answered that there would be restoration. And so the purpose of God's fire is for a spiritual purification of us. And as we submit to it, as we allow ourselves to go through it and listen to His voice, God will purify us in it as well. But it involves a decision on our part to walk through those fires. God does not make us um, submit to Him. God does not force us to obey Him. He invites us. One of the things that seems to be one of the major forces in our lives, the influences in our lives, the desires in our lives really is, is to avoid difficulty and to avoid pain. None of us want to go through those hard times. In fact, we spend an awful lot of time and energy if we, we reflect on our lives a little bit trying to avoid difficulty and trying to avoid pain and trying to make ourselves comfortable. The fires of God's purification aren't comfortable. They aren't easy, but they're for our good. God wants us to be better. He wants us to be more and more like Him. Part of this process is a, is a testing as well. Psalm 66, verse 10 says, You have tested us, O God. You have purified us like silver. And Isaiah 48, verse 10 says, I have refined you But not as silver is refined, rather I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. And so we find that this refining that comes through this time of of testing, the time of trial, and that thing that Isaiah calls the furnace of affliction. Not all the difficult things that we go through in our lives are are necessarily um, a time of testing. There's other sources of difficulty in our lives. Sometimes it can be the results of our own bad decisions of walking in sin. And so God's discipline is there. And we know that God disciplines us like a, like a loving parent disciplines his children or her children. She doesn't want to punish or he doesn't want to punish the children just for the sake of punishing. But parents want to discipline their children so they will come to the right way. And, and God does that for us too. And so some difficult situations in our lives can be a result of our own sin, of our own kinds of rebellion, and and God disciplines us to try and bring us back to the right way. We also know that we have an enemy, that Satan is real, that Satan knows that he can't really touch God, he really can't hurt God, and so he tries to get at God and and hurt God by, by hurting us and taking us away from him. And so some of the difficulties in our lives can be spiritual warfare. It can be the enemy. But there's other kinds of of difficulty and trials that we face that are this kind of testing. And so there's always this this discernment. If you're going through a difficult time or challenging time, there's a discernment that has to take place there. And and we need to ask ourselves some questions. Well, First of all, God, is there something in me that is is wrong? Something that I need to repent of? Something I need to change? I need to turn from? And if we're not sensing that, because I believe that, that if we ask that question... If we come to God and we ask God, God, is there something in me that I need to to change and repent? Is there sin in me? I believe God will answer that question. Because God's desire is always for us to come to Him. And if we're not sensing God speaking to that, then we can look to one of the other sources, a a spiritual battle, 
And we know that we have the power to resist the enemy and command him to flee from us. But sometimes those difficult times are things where where God has allowed us to go through this season of testing and of trial. And it's not anything in and of ourselves that has caused this to happen. Job is certainly a, a powerful example of that kind of testing and trial. And we can look at the story of Job and, and, and maybe even question the justice of that. God, how, how is it fair for, for you to allow Job to go through such horrible trials just to kind of prove to Satan that this is really my child? But in the midst of that, even though the things that Job went through were incredibly difficult, on the other side of that, we saw how he did come through. That he did prove himself. And that he proved himself to be even stronger in the end than, than he was at the beginning. We are tested and we are purified, put through the fires of purification because God loves us. Because God loves us so much that he, he doesn't want to let us just stay the way that we are. He wants us to be constantly growing, constantly moving towards him, constantly reflecting more and more of his image, looking more and more like him looking more and more like Jesus as we go through. God's refining fire requires reflection from us. We need to understand what it's about. In Revelation 3.19, God says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. But that's only the first part of the verse. The second part of the verse is, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. If we're experiencing God's refining fire right now, it could be that you're being disciplined, or it could simply be that, that, that this refining fire is something that God wants to point out to us, that God wants to burn out. It's not necessarily a, a discipline thing that, that we're disobeying in a certain area, but it's, it's an area that we need to be renewed in. <clears throat> it's an area that we need to be purified in. And so as we submit ourselves to that fire, as we choose to walk through it, as we choose to stay in it and allow God to, to do his work in us, we know that as we come out the other side, we will be, be more pure. We will be more like Jesus. There's a little poem, and I always say I'm not really a poetry guy, but I came across this thing, and it's, it's, it seems to, to speak into this issue. So I'm going to close with this little poem. It goes this way. He sat by a furnace of sevenfold heat as he watched by the precious ore, and closer he bent with a searching gaze as he heated it more and more. He knew he had ore that could stand the test, And he wanted the finest of gold to mold as a crown for the king to wear, set with gems of a price untold. So he laid our gold in the burning fire, though we fain would have had him said no. And he watched the dross that we had not seen as it melted and passed away. The gold grew brighter and more bright yet. But our eyes were so dim with tears, we saw only the fire, not the master's hand, and questioned with anxious fears. Yet our gold shone out with a richer glow, as it mirrored a form above, that bent over the fire, though unseen by us, with looks of ineffable love. Can we think it pleases his loving heart to cause us a moment's pain? Oh no, but he saw through the present loss, the bliss of eternal gain. So he waited there with a watchful eye, with a love that is strong and sure, and his goal did not suffer a whit more heat than was needed to make it pure. That's a little bit of a a reflection of, of God being the refiner. And no, God doesn't desire to cause us pain, but he knows that we, we need to be purified. He knows that we need to go through the fire so we can be more and more like him. And I I love that it says, the gold didn't suffer a whit more heat. It didn't suffer even a tiny little bit more heat than it needed to go through to be purified. 
God loves us that much. Yes, he allows us to go through the the fires. He allows us to go through the difficulties. But because he sees the image on the other side. The question is, will we submit ourselves to God's refining fire? Will we allow ourselves to go through it? Because we know that he has an image of what will look like on the other side. Or will we resist? Will we run away from it? Will we go our own way? It's a matter of faith, I think, and a matter of trust. Do we trust God enough to go through the fires because we know that He has good in it, in us, on the other side? Let's pray. God, we're not always sure what you're doing or why you're doing it. We don't want to go through pain and difficulty, but God, if it's your desire that we we go through a a challenging time, a time of of purification, of refining fire, God, would you give us an increased measure of faith to endure it? To go through that for as long as it takes and as difficult as it is, but remain faithful to you. To remain submitted to you in it, God. God. Because we trust you. We don't always understand you. We don't always see what you're doing or understand what your purposes are. But God, help us to know you and trust you and love you enough that even though we don't have all the answers or we don't understand why we're going through this, that we have a loving Father. A Father who is working in us. Who is purifying us. Who is who is pruning us, taking away those things that shouldn't be there, who's, who's allowing us to go through the heat so that the impurities will be burned off, so that more and more we can look like you. And God, in all this, as, as we patiently endure the difficult things that we have to go through and are made pure through it, God, we pray that those around us who don't know you would somehow be able to see your image reflected off of us in ways that, that they can't if there's impurities, if we're going our own way. So God, thank you for loving us so much. For loving us so much that you can't just be satisfied to leave us the way we are. You can't just be satisfied to, to leave us to go our own way. Give us patience and give us that extra measure of faith and trust in you. And God, as, as we see someone else who is following you and loving you, going through that challenging time of, of fire, God, help us to come alongside that person and to encourage them and to lift them up and support them through it too. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.